Hi everyone, my name is Tom Casterly and I'm a theater producer here in New York City. Um, first of all, uh, I wanted to explain a little bit about what a producer does. Um, it's different across all forms of entertainment, so a producer for film or a producer for theater or for other types of live events is going to have different responsibilities um, depending on what the project is and depending on what media uh, they're working in. And so um, a theater producer's main job is to um, make sure everyone is getting paid, uh, make sure that uh, the project doesn't go over budget and handle all of the day-to-day -day operations of whatever company that is um, that is running the the event that you're trying to put up so um, that could be as small as a uh, a play you know with three people in it um, for an audience of 50 or it could be as big as a Broadway musical uh, with 50 people in in the cast as actors um, and 3,000 people in in the audience for Broadway shows, which are here in New York City, it's a, uh, or was a big um, industry here in New York, currently is, is on hold for a little while. Um, but uh, for Broadway shows, the producer has three major responsibilities. The first is to raise the money um, so that the show can happen, whether that's $3 million, $10 million, or $20 million up to, I think the most expensive show um, on Broadway is in the kind of 70 to $80 million range. So you have to raise that money, which is gonna pay for the sets and the costumes and the rental of the theater and paying everyone's salary. Um, the second job is marketing the show, uh, selling tickets to the show. Uh, theater would not exist if there were not people who wanted to see it. Um, so you need to get the word out about the show, and that's publicity. You need to put advertisements in um, so that hopefully people buy tickets and your show can keep, keep going. Um, and then the third responsibility is, as I mentioned before, the day-to-day -day tasks of essentially running a small company or a startup. So you're hiring um, 50 or 100 people, and that's everyone from the casting director who is going to uh, help choose the actors for the show, or the lawyer who's putting together all of the investment documents to the show, to the general management company who is doing the budgets and the payroll for the show. All of those people um, need to be managed, and, and that's uh, one of the things that the producer does. So theater is a huge, huge um, industry. Uh, that that spans a whole lot of different um, projects and as I said that could be from a show with an audience of 50 people to one with 3,000 or a big show in a, an arena that would hold you know 50 or 60,000 people. Um, Broadway is a very specific slice of that industry. It only happens in New York City um, in these specific theaters that are called Broadway theaters and to be a Broadway theater you need to um, follow a certain number of guidelines. So that's a number of um, seats, right? It has to be more than 500 seats and it has to be in a, in a very specific geographic location um, in the middle of New York City. Um, Broadway is kind of like in football, there are a whole lot of ways that you can play football. You can play with your friends, you know, outside. You can play in a youth league. You can play on your university team. You can play um, as part of a local, um, you know, city uh, uh, team, right, up to the professional level where you have, you know, regional and city-based teams and leagues. And then you also have national um, uh, teams. And so uh, Broadway is similar in a way in that it's just one type of you know theater that's very specific so like the Moroccan national team for example that's that's not representative of all of football um, in its entirety but it is a, a specific and really cool um, thing to support and so um, there are so many different types of theater that can be done in, in many different ways and I work in a lot of different uh, forms of it, 
Um, but most of my training is in producing Broadway theater, which falls into these very specific categories. And those are, you know, some shows that you might have heard of, like West Side Story or like Wicked or Phantom of the Opera. All of those are Broadway shows, which means that they had a production that ran or is still running in New York City at one of these specific theaters. And then later in its life, those shows may go around the country and around the world um, to have other spin-off productions of them, but um, they all originated in, uh, in New York. Um, and another thing that's kind of special about Broadway is that it's a commercial enterprise. It's for-profit rather than not-for-profit. Um, and that means that when you put on a show, the goal, of course, is to, you know, spread art and entertainment to as many people as you can, but you have to do so with the mindset that it's your obligation to try and make the money back that you put into it in the beginning. I think theater is really important um, because it's a way that you can gather people together and give them a shared experience. And that's something that um, I believe uh, is rare um, in our lives today, where you can sit with 500 people in the same room watching the same play and everyone has their own unique experience um, and learn something a little bit more about what other humans are like and then at the same time you get to share that experience with the people around you and that's part of what makes theater so special you know that it's it's also a live form of entertainment so it can't be it's not going to be the same thing every night it's going to be different it's unique to that time and place um, and that quality, I think, is what makes it special and also really important for people to be able to do. Um, unfortunately, right now, that's exactly the kind of event that can't happen. Um, when you put 500 or 1,000 people in a room for two and a half hours, that's exactly the kind of activity that, um, that is uh, going to spread um, something like COVID. And so, um, as, as is, I'm sure, true in, in Morocco, here in New York, all of the theaters are closed, all large events um, are, are closed. And honestly, with theater, um, because even it, though it is extremely important, it's gonna be one of the last things to open back up. So in the industry, we're looking at maybe another year before you know we have enough information and um, protection in place so that people can go visit the theater safely. And that's too bad because in times like these, um, theater is actually one of the things that people can turn to usually. It brings people together as a community and it allows people to have an experience that takes them out of their you know, regular life for a while. So it is quite uh, frustrating and sad that at a time when we all really need theater, that's one of the, the things we can't do. One of the other reasons that theater is so important is it allows us to tackle themes and issues that might be uncomfortable to tackle in everyday conversation, um, but you get to see them uh, up on stage dealt with in a way that, that makes the entire audience maybe think about a topic in a certain way. Um, and I think that's really important so that those could be any sorts of issues from political to social to family um, issues and sometimes just just watching a situation unfold or a scene unfold on stage gives you a um, a window into life and what's going on into your in your own life that you wouldn't have had otherwise and then suddenly you multiply that by the number of people who are in the audience and Every night you have 500 people who are walking away with a slightly more broad, more open perspective on a social issue or a theme or a relationship. Um, and so, you know, there can be plays that tackle really, really serious um, topics like, you know, like illness or death or, you know, um, uh, social, you know, social issues um, like, you know, freedom of speech or, um, other things that that might be either taboo or um, just difficult to talk about in everyday life, but they're able to do so on stage because it's not someone's personal opinion, you know, being represented. It's it's in the context of a play, 
um, when people are talking to each other. And I think that really allows for us to kind of remove that, the personal element from, um, from the situation, but still walk away with kind of a little bit more understanding of how humans work. Um, and then on the other hand, theater can be about things that are silly. There are plenty of comedies out there that their goal is just to make you laugh. And I think in many ways, that's just as important as something serious like a, a, a really dark family drama. Um, and I think that the, the fact that theater can contain both of those things, the really serious stuff and the stuff that just makes you, you know, laugh and, and, and leave the theater singing a, uh, a great song. Um, those are both really important. So I started producing theater about 10 years ago, um, right after I graduated from school, um, from university in Chicago, I moved to New York City, um, where I got an internship at a general management company. And as I mentioned briefly before, uh, general managers are the people on Broadway who are doing the, the day to day, um, running of the show. So they're doing the payroll, making sure everyone gets paid. They're doing the contracts to make sure that there's an agreement between uh, members of the creative team, like the director and the choreographer. Um, and they're also um, in charge of the budget and the bank statements and everything that needs to actually run the business. And so I interned there um, at a general management company. And that's where I started to learn a little bit more about how the business actually works. Um, and then shortly after I started working for a small theater producing company uh, called Barbara Whitman Productions. Um, I started off as Barbara's assistant. Um, and then over the next six years, uh, I transitioned to being her associate and then also being a producing partner on a lot of shows that we did. Um, the most notable show that we uh, worked on together was called Fun Home. Um, which won the Tony Award for Best Musical in 2015. Um, I worked on that piece for about four years from while it was being developed, so it hadn't, uh, while it was being written and while it was being worked on, all the way to its um, Broadway uh, debut. Um, and then we did a national tour um, and a production in London um, after that. So. Uh, even one one show you could be working on for quite a long time, um, but each each show is different, and each um, production, whether it's on Broadway or a tour that goes around to theaters uh, across the country, um, they're all very different. Um, so you never get bored. Um, now I uh, work for myself, so I started a um, theater production company uh, last year, uh, and I went out on my own to start my own business. Um, and so now I do a mix of producing shows uh, similarly to how I did before and also being an executive producer for other people. And what that means is someone who might have the money and the idea for a project, um, but not necessarily the, the time or the ability to do all of the day-to-day -day operations, they might hire me to, to help with that. And so I work for a bunch of different people and they hire me to to help them make sure that the show is running smoothly um, and that it's um, going to be developed as as well as it possibly can. Um, the other thing I do is um, I, I work on a series of creative media festivals um, and it's possible that some of you have heard of the Humane uh, Creative Media Festival in Tangier that happens every July um, and uh, I founded that, co-founded that festival with uh, Zacharia Alilish and um, our friend George Bajalia, and we've been doing this uh, festival for the past five years, um, and it's basically a two-day media festival, so uh, film, theater, dance, uh, visual art, all together in um, uh, each, each team of artists creates a project over uh, the course of 48 hours. And then at the end of the two days, you main, uh, we open the doors and allow the public to come in and see what everyone's created. So while that's not specifically only theater, that's a big part of my life as well. And it, and it uses a lot of the same um, skill sets that I use uh, in Broadway, um, just in a very different uh, environment. 
So we do that in uh, Tangier every year. And then I also um, work on a similar festival uh, in Qatar um, every February. Um, so that's kind of the span of projects that I might work on from something that is a, a two day festival to something that might uh, take four years um, of my time. I think my advice to someone who would want to um, have a career in theater is just to start doing it. There are so many ways that you can be involved on a production team and every single theater production team always needs extra help. And so just by joining a team and saying, hey, how can I help you guys with this? Whether you have a skill set in marketing or graphic design or in scenic construction or uh, budgeting or accounting or anything like that, there's a home for you in theater. It's not just acting or directing. Um, it is all of the you know different jobs that are necessary to, to put a show up. And so I would say if you um, are interested in working in, in kind of this half of theater, get involved with the production. See, see if there are any shows that are coming up, uh, especially after, uh, you know, lockdown uh, restrictions um, are, are over, you know, see, see what's going on and ask how you can um, get involved. And I think the, I learned quite a bit about theater in school and I've learned quite about a bit about theater in in my more like formal uh, jobs but the most um, that I learn is when I'm actually doing it and part of a team that's trying to put up a production uh, however big or however small and then finally just to talk a little bit about the future of Broadway it's going to be really tough um, to come through the other side of, um, of this COVID um, epidemic. Um, as I said before, Broadway is gonna be one of the last things that's able to open up. And it is an industry that operates on a very, very tight um, a margin, um, just like restaurants or something like that. Um, it's really hard for a theater to um, to even make back, you know, the costs um, of doing it, let alone make a profit. And so I think it's going to um, it's going to be a kind of tough road to um, recovery. Um, maybe some of the more commercial, you know, more mainstream pieces will be able to come back first, like Wicked or um, Phantom of the Opera, where you know, they have a name um, that a lot of people recognize. And, you know, especially after being at home for so long, people might be excited about going to the theater and seeing one of those shows. Um, and then I think it's just going to be a slow uh, recovery over the next, you know, five years or so, um, where um, we're slowly building up the funding to be able to and and also the infrastructure um, to be able to do shows again. Um, but I do think that, you know, in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years, things will be, um, uh, will we'll grow back and uh, it will be a kind of vibrant industry just as it has been for the last 100 years. Um, so long term, I think everyone's going to be uh, okay. But in terms of the the productions and the producers and the everyone who works on shows that are happening right now, um, it's going to be really tough for, for quite a while. Um, anyway, I think that's, uh, that's it. If you have any questions, um, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I am currently at home and will be for the foreseeable future. So if you're interested in getting involved with theater or you have questions about theater in New York, or if you have questions about the Humane Festival um, that we do in Tangier that is um, a project by the uh, American Cultural Association and the ALC, um, let me know um, or reach out to Zach Elilesh because um, as I said, we are always looking for um, people to help out with the festival. And um, if you're not interested in helping out, um, we hope that you'll join us every year. So thank you for having me and I hope everyone has a great day.